Thanks for joining us on Plus Politics. Uh, the most popular name in the last couple of days, Isa Pantami. The presidency declares its support for the minister. And what exactly is the security implication of the embattled minister staying in office? I am Osaogi Ogbawa and this is Plus Politics. Welcome once again to PLOS Politics here on PLOS TV Africa. The presidency has finally made known its stand as regards calls for the embattled communications minister, Issa Pantami, to step down or be sacked. In his statement, Gar Bashehu uh, said the uh, pr President Buhari's administration stands behind Minister Pantami and all Nigerian citizens to ensure they receive fair treatment, fair prices and fair protection in ICT services. He also said the administration would commence an investigation into allegations that some businesses were behind the attacks on the minister. Joining us to discuss this is a uh, political analyst and of course a legal practitioner, Byron Fagmo. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. <clears throat> All right. So I'll start with, you know, there's been numerous reactions since the message from Garba Shehu came in uh, late yesterday evening. Uh, I, I want to get yours. Uh, there's people who agree with the presidency and agree with uh, Garba Shehu. Uh, and then there's those who say that Nigeria has made a huge mistake uh, with taking a stand like that. What are your own thoughts? Well, the, the, the issue is very sad but um, seems to be playing out or confirming the fears of uh, many Nigerians uh, that were not, um, uh, that were concerned about our president, President Buhari and his government. Um, there have been all sorts of allegations in the past about extremism, about uh, religious bias, about challenges in capacity to understand the issues and um, you know the deliberate exclusion of certain Nigerians uh, based on both ethnicity and religion and uh, general bias. And this playing out appears to be confirming this. The issues against Pantami is not an attack on per person. It is a considering the fact that you have um, you have a minister of the federal government in charge of the, one of the most sensitive responsibilities, which requires absolute openness, transparency, and patriotism. Now, in the course of his performing those responsibilities, we've seen that national identity, uh, the implementation of the NIM, has affected commerce, has affected demographics, and there is evidence that non-nationals are beginning to benefit from this. It was in the midst of this that facts emerged that Pantami was, uh, had demonstrated in the past, and there is still evidence as he is conducting his uh, ministerial responsibilities that, he's, that he has an Islamist agenda, not only an Islamist, but an extremely Islamist agenda. Um, and that he will use his responsibilities to support um, Islamists, one religion against another. And one of the uh, clear evidence of this was his being, his patronizing 
with federal funds, a, an online communication outfit that is purely and entirely religious. Um, the implication of that is that money from the federal government is being, is funding Islamist organizations under the guise that, you know, we are buying airtime and um, promoting a federal government activity. Now, all this um, moderate Muslims, those who understand that Nigeria is a secular government, and millions and millions of Christians, of course, are concerned. Clearly, the NIN process is at risk. Um, it's under threat. And people register that concern, and the decent thing to do if there was no malvolent intention, or if the quest for office was more interesting than the service to be delivered, Pantami should have resigned, or at least stepped aside. And this is what people are asking him to do. People are saying, look, we cannot trust you as a person who is representing the federal government of Nigeria with so much security data considering your position to a great population in this country, considering your extreme uh, positions, considering your past utterances that border on criminality. So Nigerians are considering this and have asked him to resign. Now the federal government has come in. Instead of seeing it as a legitimate allegation that should be investigated, they are seeing it as, as an attack on Pantami, as a personal attack on Pantami. Now, I want to believe that the president does not understand what is going on at all. If he does, the question to ask Mr. President is that, is this consistent with his vision for Nigeria? Is it, is it a great time also to have a conversation about whether the president truly understands, uh, you know, every single detail of what's going on in Nigeria precisely, or chooses to ignore? That is precisely ignore. the first question I ask. I believe and I honestly believe that the president does not have a, an understanding. He does not know the implications Mr. Mr. Fag of Mr. Fagmero, are you saying, are you saying that? Implications yeah. Or the sad thing is that he doesn't care. Yeah, so are you saying, you know, do you choose to believe that he doesn't understand uh, because it's a safer um, uh, belief than agreeing or admitting that he maybe understands and, you know, the possibility of, of him being in on, on the same um, or with the same ideologies? Is that scary? You see, that, that is, it is most scary. But for me, for a person like me, it was predictable. And it was aforesaid. As you know, I took part in the last elections. And a number of other people had registered. Uh, General Buhari, you know, we, you know, he's well known. His position, he's, he has not changed in terms of his ideology and his emphasis and his preferences since 1984. So that's why I'm asking. But I want to give him the benefit of the doubt of not understanding on account of, number one, his age. Secondly, on account of the fact that he claimed to have been a converted Democrat. It's a combination of the two. So the only condition which he may not understand what is going on is because of probably uh, the, the loss of certain capacities. And the fact that there is deliberate misinformation around him. Otherwise, we must have to admit that it is consistent with his vision. The second point I made was that, is this his vision? And I think somebody should ask, and the president himself must answer, is this the vision you had for Nigeria? What is the vision? How come that we have this now? 
it appears that you know, if you have people like Pantami in government, you will never win the war against Boko Haram. You will never win the war against Iswa. You will never win the war against Islamic terrorism, and Nigeria will collapse as a secular country. All right, so, Mr. Fagbaro, I, I want to ask another... Whoever has control all over the NIM has control over the demographics. Yeah, I, I, I want to ask another another question. Hold on, Mr. Fagmeru. I want to ask, um, yeah. maybe this should be my second, maybe scary question. So yeah. do these things that you're saying also, you know, uh, is there a possibility that there is more than one Issa Pantami in the current Nigerian government? From it's your analysis, if the, if, yeah, if, if, if from your analysis, be. the president because may not be aware. Everything Go ahead. is networked. The entire government is networked. And when policies are to be implemented, they are always implemented multidimensionally. Even a policy that is negative, a policy, for example, like the Islamization of Nigeria, has to be conducted in collaboration with a number of sectors, sectors that determine. All right, we seem to uh, have lost uh, Byron Fagmero there. Uh, we hope that we can reconnect with him. The conversation really is uh, on the program this evening is on the president's and the presidency's response to uh, the um, you know, conversation surrounding Issa Pantami. Uh, Byron Fagmero, welcome back. I guess uh, we can have you now. Go ahead, please. So what I'm saying, in essence, is that the, um, any policy to be implemented has to be implemented within a multitude of sectors. A policy, for example, for a negative policy, because we are in that realm and we have to talk about it. The threat now is a policy to Islamize Nigeria. It has to be run concurrently with sections of the uh, government that deal with registration, that deal with internal security, that deal with uh, intelligence, you see, that deal with enumeration, that deal with internal affairs, and that deal with migration, you see because the attack is on the demographics. Now, that is a clear policy. And so you will have somebody who has to partner with Pantami in somewhere else, in some of the ministries that are related to this. And I tell you, we've had this Boko Haram struggle for a while, the uh, extremist struggle for a while. And, you know, from the Boko Haram maturing to the banditry experience, to the herdsman experience. They said, by thy fruits you shall know them. The objective of Boko Haram, for example, is to make sure you shut down schools, shut down Western education. But what is the effect of, 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 uh, of banditry? Schools have been shut down. What is the effect of um, invaders of herdsmen in villages? Schools have been shut down. And now you're having someone we discovered in uh, our federal cabinet that has, is, has confessed that this is his agenda. Now, he's told us he has changed. But the gentleman who did the investigation proved to us that even while as a minister, he's patronizing extreme Islamic media vehicles even using state funds. How do we explain that? All right. You see, so I want to believe that the president does not understand the full implications of this because it goes directly against um, his oath of office. All right, hold on, uh, Baron uh, Fagmero. To pieces. All right, kindly hold on, uh, Mr. Fagmero. I, I, I want to bring in uh, Wale Ogunwade. Uh, who's just joined us. Uh, I think I would like him to pick up from that last point you made, uh, the benefit of doubt that the president may not understand the implications or may not be fully aware 
of the implications of taking a stand like that. So, Mr. Ogunade, thank you for joining us. Thank you, my brother. How are you? Fantastic. Um, so let, let's hear from you. The, uh, your co-anchor, co-speaker there says that President Mohamed Bari may not be fully aware of the implications of, take, of uh, the Nigerian government taking a stand like that. Do you agree with that possibility? And what's also your reaction to uh, the defense from Garba Shehu? Yeah, well, Garbashi who always talk like that, so we are not surprised because he is Man Friday to the president. He is to always be the attack dog. And to that extent, he will always talk. He doesn't see anything wrong in whatever the government does. And this is a very big issue. And uh, I've always been surprised the way Boko Haram and all these extremists have been working, having classified information and working with classified information of government, including how uh, troops move in, the, in, the, in those dangerous areas. So we now know where it has come from. And for somebody in the, in the name of Garba Shehu to now be saying that the president is comfortable or not, uh, or that maybe there are some double personality, I don't think so, because I am aware that before anybody assumes any office in this country, even at the local government level, a check is run on him by the director of the Department of State Security. And they have a list and a profile of everyone who is everybody in this country. And so for the president to tell us that this personality is unknown and their antecedents are unknown is, is a big error. And that can be given to us because we know that the issue of sentiment, sentiments and uh, nepotism have taken the pride right of place. And I'll refer the government, particularly the presidency, to Section 10 of the 1999 Constitution, which forbid anybody sponsoring or using state resources for particular, a particular religion. And to that extent, I want government to come out clean on this. This one has come open. And in one of the interviews, the man indeed confirmed that, yes, that was in his past. And I don't see how his past cannot continue to haunt him, because all of us must come up clean. And not coming up clean, obviously, is an error that will affect the future. And that's what we are seeing. And that's what we are seeing. And I can assure you that if the DSS will dig deep, I won't want to divulge much more than that. If the DSS will dig deep into this man, you will find out that indeed there is a whole lot of connection, contact, and arrangement between him and these people. All right. Um, do, do you? Uh, I want you to also speak with regards the response of the presidency and uh, the picture that they have tried to paint. Uh, that this is, uh, like you said, in Issa Pantami's uh, past. Uh, do you think that that is also in line with the Nigerian government's positioning? If you remember, they've also had uh, uh, de-radicalization campaigns and uh, you know, reintegration of ex-Boko Haram and uh, uh, forgiving Boko Haram and forgiving terrorists into the system. So do you think this is also in line with that same ideology, that people could you know, be terrorists in the past, but when they decide to pull down their weapons and be de-radicalized, they can be forgiven and reintegrated into society? Is that what the, the current uh, Nigerian government is saying um, as uh, their own ideology? Yes, that's the ideology. And we now know who is pushing the ideology forward. And there is no other person who is pushing it forward than this Issa Pantawi. That's just it, because this is a, a group that has caused a lot of havoc on this country. And of course, I will just push it to that of banditry as being pushed by Gumi. These things are things, well, whatever is bad, that's why we Yorubas, we are, we are straightforward on this. Whatever is bad is bad. There is no other name. If people who have committed heinous crime as this are now said yes, that they should now be integrated into the military or the, or the, or the, or the system, security system by per se, then obviously it's a big error because we know that they will become a tongue coat. They will turn around. That I know for sure. And to me, it's a dangerous idea and it's a policy that should be discarded. And I know we have discussed it before that this policy should not fly and should not be allowed in the Nigerian system. And it won't because it, is, it, will, it pretends danger for the nation called Nigeria. And that's why I can assure you that it is encouraging all these uh, calls for self-determination by the Yorubas in the Middle Belt and even the Southeasterners 
But again, that will be another discussion for another day. But mark my word, what I've just said about the government not flipping this issue in the board and taking it holistically, looking at it non-partisan. Because partisanship has really caused us a whole lot of problems in this country. And the earlier we start moving against partisan, part, part, uh, partisanship in this country, the better. Government is government, and government is for all, not for some section, and not for a religion, and not for a people. It is for all, and it's for the betterment and the best interest of everybody, that government must work in the interest of everyone. Because as Section 12, uh, Section uh, 14 of the 1999 Constitution provides that security, uh, sorry, Section 12, security and welfare of the people, not of a section, not of a tribe, not of a religion. The Constitution is definite on this mandate of the government and those who hold instruments and levels and levers of government, and that they must do to the people. And of course, when they were uh, taking the oath of office, what they do was an allegiance to the Federal Republic of Nigeria, not an allegiance, taking an allegiance to their tribe, to their section, or to their people, or even to their family. It is to the Federal Republic, and whatever it is about the Federal Republic, it must be something that will be done without any form of sentiment, without any form of bias. Bias is there, and that's why we see what is happening. All right. Um, I'm going back to uh, Byron Fagmero. I'm going to share with you, and of course, in reaction to uh, Mr. Ogunade's uh, statements, uh, uh, Aisha Yesufu uh, was on uh, social media today and she made mention that the presidency is an institution and it's not dependent on Gar Bashehu or Femi Adishin or anybody. It is an institution that should represent something that should stand against uh, terrorism entirely. But uh, Byron Fagmero, I want you to react to this. Uh, uh, a Twitter user, it's pretty popular, uh, Cheta Wanze, tweeted. It says, whether people realize it or not, something died in Nigeria yesterday something that had been holding on to its dear life for a long time. Does that make sense to you, and do you agree with that? I, you see, I absolutely agree with that. Something happened. Um, for me, it's like someone took a pot of, you know, a, a, a clay pot that belonged to everybody, and smashed it on the floor. You see, now it appears that all pretenses are off. We have seen clearly that um, the extremist forces, they've been in government for a very long time, but now they've been caught, they've been exposed which is consistent with the prayers of many, that those who make Nigeria, those who are enemies of Nigeria, enemies of the people, enemies of peace, enemies of justice, that may God expose them. And to be honest, that is what has happened. I'm only giving the president the benefit of the doubt because he is the president. And I'm giving him the president that he does not know. But the vice president knows. The vice president of this country knows exactly what is happen happening. Well, uh, Byron Fagman, it doesn't... The president, of the, the, the president of the Senate, the speaker of the House, they know. Yeah, I, I was just going to mention the that. The minister Wait. of internal affairs knows. Yeah, Byron Fagman, we need to wrap it up here. I was just going to mention that uh, saying that the president is not aware as benefit of doubt doesn't make anybody feel safe, uh, safer. <laughs> he should know <laughs> every single detail of what's going on in Nigeria. Or, you know, some of these things, you know, there's nothing that should be kept from him. But thank you very much, Byron uh, Fagmenro and Wanli Ogunade, for sharing your views with us on uh, the program this evening. I truly appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much for having us. Absolutely. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break, and when we return, we discuss the security implications of the minister staying in office. We'll be right back. <laughs>